If you're going to give a Tascam 244 a deep clean, um, as well as the mixer channels, a couple of things that you're going to want to clean are the Q amplifier, that's this board here, and the pitch control, which is a tiny little board here. Because I've already made a video demonstrating how I clean these mixer strips and also one on how I clean the mixer on a Tascam 424 Mark III and the, the process of actually cleaning it is identical, i.e. I put some contact cleaner through it, blow, blow that through with compressed air, apply some lubricant, agitate the pots and switches a little bit to make sure that that lubricant spread across. Um, I'll put links to those videos in the description of this one. Um, all I'm going to do here is just show you how to remove these boards. You'll notice I've got the cassette module that would go here, out of the machine. If you don't know how to do that, then I have a video on that. I'll also link to that. The reason I've removed it is that although this pitch board here can be detached, actually this little bit here, which is part of the door opening mechanism, will catch and transport if the transport isn't removed. But you can see there's a board here that's attached to the chassis with one, two screws. Pull any wires out of the way and that should just lift out. So that's the release mechanism for the plastic door. There's a very simple printed circuit board here. It's got a couple of resistors and uh, two variable resistors. So that's fine adjustment of pitch and that's the overall adjustment of pitch. So if this is at 12 o'clock because it's notched, you can feel that there's a place where that should be 12 o'clock as you look at it from the front face of the 244. At that point, if you have a frequency counter and a reliably produced, either commercially or a tape you've produced yourself on a machine you know is calibrated with, say, you know, a thousand hertz signal, then you can adjust that one so that when this is um, at 12 o'clock, then the, the tape's playing back a thousand hertz or whatever your test frequency is. Um, if you don't have that facility, then I would advise not to move this, though you could still put some contact cleaner in case there's some grit or something in there. Um, but yeah, you, you can do the usual procedure. You can see there's actually an access point just at the top there. You can squirt that in. Got to move around, blow the contact cleaner out, and lubricate it. Sometimes what you'll find is if this gets very dirty, in much the same way that if you've got a dirty volume pot on a guitar, that manifests as crackle, the way it comes through out through the audio signal. Um, really what we're doing is introducing a voltage into the positive input of the um, capstan motor. And so if that is crackling, then that crackle can manifest itself in irregular jumps or dips in pitch. Um, so if you're having pitch issues, then that is something that you want to clean. Moving on to the Q amplifier, let's remove the leads for this. You can see that there's two identical pairs of leads here, and I've marked the top one with, with permanent marker. Um, I've just checked the schematic just now to remind myself what all the different plugs do, and actually that it's unnecessary to do that, because basically one of these is sending the tape out to the tape out sockets on the back of the unit and one is sending the tape out signal to the record playback amplifier so actually these two are are interchangeable next over here we have a black one and it is coming from the power supply this here is the decoded signal coming from the dbx board after coming from tape this red one eventually winds its way around here to the back of the unit and that's your four tape outputs. And finally this one with the orange, yellow, red and brown which correspond to channels 4, 3, 2, 1. That colour scheme is used pretty consistently throughout this machine. Those signals are going into into your mixer strips one, one, two, three, four respectively. Basically your signals coming from tape through the DBX board and then it's jumping to the cue board and then it's going to the uh, mixer strips. That's its signal th flow when you're playing back a recording. There's two screws. There's one deep down in here and there's one deep down in, in here. 
and they're the same size of screw that we used to attach the transport to the chassis. In fact, I'm trying to think if there's any exception. I think everything that's screwed into the chassis all uses is the same size of screw. Okay, that comes out like that. By the way, I've got this wedged up with a little rolled up bit of cardboard at both ends. You could use wooden blocks, but these don't scratch the surface. The purpose of that is if you've got this down on a cushion or a piece of foam, as you should do, so you don't scratch or damage any of these knobs, then that gives me a little bit of clearance so I can drop that back in and it's flush with the chassis again. Anyway, these knobs and so on will just pull off. And this bit of shielding is held on with... Um, I had a complete brain fart there and I couldn't remember what that's called. It's a nut with nuts and washers. So you can just loosen them with your pliers. And take them off by hand. With those removed, then that plate will come off. The circuit here is actually relatively simple. If you can like look past all those capacitors and resistors, really we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten major components on it. And the rest of it's just supporting infrastructure as I see it. These dual gang pots, so like that's gain, that one's pan for one, two, three, four channels. And then we've got one, two, three, four operational amplifiers for each channel, and then we've got a pair of operational amplifiers in the one integrated chip here, and that's the tape out. These capacitors and resistors are essentially making sure that each of these hero components get like enough push, not too much push. The capacitors will have a role, perhaps in filtering and, and so on, but also in stopping any um, DC getting into the audio path. That's kind of an aside. You would just go about this the same way. If you don't have a lubricant, avoid putting contact cleaner on these because there's grease in there. Contact cleaner can eat that away and then the metal parts will actually rub against each other and that feels horrible and can manifest itself in audio problems. But, you know, you could just blow any grit or dirt or anything out of here uh, with um, contact cleaner and then compress air. It would probably be okay without lubricant. But ideally you would have some kind of lubricant handy and you'd put that on the shaft of these after they've been cleaned and in these cavities which is actually where you've got a wiper going across a, um, a carbon plate. Again, refer to the other videos I've done on that cleaning process. I was really just wanting to give you an overview of what's happening in that circuit board and a bit of a heads up about how you'd remove that.